Welcome to the Loaded Goat. I'm Aaron. I'm Christopher. How's it going, Christopher? I just got a massage. Oh, nice. Pretty, feeling pretty, pretty limber. Did you you uh, see my dewy glow of mineral oil. Was it a deep tissue massage? It was a deep tissue massage, and then I went to Qdoba to continue my self-care morning. Yeah, Qdoba. I mean, what did you get at Qdoba? I got a burrito bowl. Oh, nice. nice. Low on carbs. Nice. Well, I, you keep taking care of yourself. I will. I will. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Doing Good. fine. Just, just plug it along. Good. Uh, today we're doing, if I had a quarter million or one quarter million, it's... Um, Seen this type of episode before, but it kind of starts. It's 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 it's, it's a, with a little bit of a twist. Yeah, it does have a little little twisty too. Yeah. Oh, uh, you want to dive in? Let's jump right in. All right. The episode first aired on February fifteenth, nineteen sixty-five, the day after Valentine's Day in nineteen sixty-five. We open with Barney out on patrol, and he sees a vagrant sitting on a log. And he pulls up, and he goes to run him off. The homeless man gives him a and runs off. This is a good Bar- exchange. I enjoy it was a good exchange. You know, Barney hates a loiterer as much as the next. He came in pretty hot to trot and uh, really shoot him away. You know, it makes me think. We were when we had Chris Hollinghead on a few a few weeks ago. We talked about Rambo, and this is basically the plot of. First blood is yeah. the sheriff sees a vagrant and he decides to deal with them. And the vagrant turns out to be Rambo and it's things don't work out. I would hate to see what would happen if Barney Fife came upon Rambo. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. I like that. He would, uh, I think, mean, yeah. I um, don't even think you have to. As a society, we need like a skit com- like a we have enough like comedic skit sketch comedy we need like sketch horror where people take like different scenarios that happen in movies and say well what if this happens and so every saturday night you tune in barney five goes runs into jack the ripper right i mean is there any scenario in any crime or horror movie that does not involve barney fife if you put barney fife in it does not involve him getting killed. Well, I mean, it came up in, uh, we talked about this a year ago, um, Seven. You know, they mentioned Barney Fife, and he doesn't get killed. A lot of other people do. Barney Fife just is mentioned. He doesn't get killed, though. Yeah, correct. I'm talking about if, like you say, you take this character and you replace him with Barney Fife. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Like Barney could survive as Kramer. He could survive as Kramer. Both in the TV show or in Kramer versus Kramer. He would lose his kids. Yeah, but, you know. Badly. He'd still be alive. Uh, What about if you put Barney Fife, he replaces Al Pacino's character in Heat? Oh, okay. He would uh, would win. You think he'd catch Robert De Niro? He'd take take down Robert De Niro's crew? Yeah, I do. I haven't seen that movie. You've never seen Heat, have you? (laughs) No, I can can tell. But I watched a couple of Miami Heat games when LeBron was playing there. What's an action movie? What's a crime movie that you like? I just watched Cape Fear. Okay. Barney is the Barney is the guy and protecting protecting the Bow, the Bowden family. Um when when Robert De Niro infiltrates the house the house pretending to be the maid. Uh I think he ends up the same path as the maid. Yeah. Barney Fife is Iron Man. Oh, interesting. Not that far off. Don Knotts, Robert Downey. Yeah, I'm just asking, what do you think happens? I think he still has the heart of the heart, the little heart mechanism, and then that kind of helps him have the super skills he needs. You don't think he he runs into things or hits walls or anything like that? Certainly a learning curve, my goodness. All right. Well, I'm just asking if you're if you're uh, what you would think about something like that. Anyway, Barney chases him, but finds a briefcase. And back at the jail, Andy calls to see if anything has been reported because they've got the briefcase. It hasn't. And Andy says they have to open it, figure out who it belongs to. And Barney is uncomfortable with it. 
Andy takes it over to Goobers to pick the lock. And as he leaves, Barney says, it's little things like this that lead to a police state. Which is the first time we've ever seen Barney on the other side, right? Typically he's worried about sin, sin, sin. Generally, you know, you were kind of like wondering why would all of a sudden Barney be concerned about people's privacy? He invades people's privacy all the time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's because he, he made a snap judgment, as we all tend to do. And then he's digging his heels in. Yeah, that happens a lot these days. At the at Goobers, they uh, pop the uh, lock, and the briefcase is full of money, and Andy tells them not to tell anyone. In, in normal- $10,000 stacks. In $10,000 stacks. Normally, you would be sitting here and like, okay, the plot of this episode is going to be Goober ends up letting it slip to everyone. I did think that. I did, too. He came, he came through. Yeah. And back at the jail, Andy is on the phone with the FBI. It turns out somebody robbed a bank and chucked the suitcase from the train when someone was closing in. And they're sending an, an agent down to meet with Andy and help out. Surprised me that they never once questioned that it would be the, the vagrant. I mean, do you think that vagrant could? Well, vagrant I don't doesn't know. Seem they like found it, it right next to a guy who was sitting there. They kicked him out and they're like, where could the luggage come from? I mean, today, it, I mean, this is kind of like the plot of No Country for Old Men. Mm hmm. If the vagrant picks it up, who's chasing him all around yeah. you know, the town in North Carolina? Have you seen No Country for Old Men? Of course I have. Cormac McCarthy. Yeah. Javier the, Bardem in his finest. Second he, finest. Ooh, he's finest. Qu- Ooh. Is he better in that or in Skyfall? Oh, he's better in that. And in oh, No Country for Old Men. Oh, Skyfall's so good, though. He's terrifying in No Country for Old Men. Yeah, he is. Okay. I mean, right. I don't I gotta be honest with you. I, I realize the um the guy he plays in Skyfall is is a criminal mastermind and very smart and not somebody you'd want who you'd want chasing you, but I'd rather have him chasing me than Anton Shagur. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> okay, all right. I see it. I see it. Yeah. So Barney says they need to take action because there is a bank robber in the midst. And he has an idea of using himself as bait to lure the robber out by by pretending he has kept the money for himself. And Andy goes to put the money in the safe and Barney gets an idea and leaves. So what do we think is going to happen next? Oh, we know what's happening next. So we cut them walking down the street in salt and pepper and smoking a cigar. He looks real sharp. He's looking fine. It doesn't look like he has actually taken any of the money out. So he's bankrolling this whole endeavor. Well, what, is, what is the, is he carrying like a camera case? It looks like a camera case. I couldn't tell yeah. if it was a camera case or it was supposed to be a money satchel or something like okay. that. Yeah. And... So he tells Floyd he's going to take the bus down to Florida and blow a couple of hundred bucks at the track, which I'm kind of like, if you were really living big time, would you be taking the bus? I don't know. I don't know if if rich people (laughs) took the bus back there. Um, Floyd asks him if he fell into some money, and Barney says he's doing all right. And Floyd tries to figure out what it is, and Barney says if anyone asks for him, let him let them know he'll be playing poker down at the hotel. No limit. Deuce is wild. It's a great scene. Floyd I mean, is wonderful in this episode. He's with the with the duster on the suit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm not a huge gambler, but I've always it's always been my understanding if you are playing Deuce is wild, you are not a serious poker player. Is that fair to say? To com- I don't know enough to comment. That's always been my take. I mean, I think Deuce is wild is like playing. He, gave, he gives Floyd a cigar, and Floyd looks so silly with that cigar in his mouth as we cut to the next scene. See, I see, I think it's surprising, though, that Barney would part with both a cigar and a $1 bill, even though he's got a got an act going. I'm assuming he thinks he can petty cash all of it. Or maybe he's willing to pony up for the notion of taking down a bank robber before the FBI does. Mm-hmm. So... Barney goes to the hotel asking if anyone has checked in. No one has. And Barney no, then someone goes, has recently. Oh. A month ago. A month ago. Yes. Down. Yeah. And then Barney comes back to the jail and Andy is not happy. Um, Barney takes his coat off and Andy sees that he's got a, his gun in, a, in his back waist and he gets stuck in his underwear and then later falls down his pant leg. I, whenever I see people with just their gun tucked into their pants, I'm always a little bit like that just seems. Like it has disaster written all over it. Yeah, it it does. I think it's common though. You see it a lot in like Justified. 
a lot. You do. Yeah. You do. I've never seen I've never seen anybody in real life walk around with a gun tucked into their well, that's because it's hidden, you know? Nobody's ever said, let me show you my gun. That's Yeah, I hope that that stays the same for you. I hope so, too. I mean, I'm, I've always been figuring, I'm, at one point, you're going to be like, let me show you my gun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, a little, it'll be a super soaker. I mean, I mean, you know, you're always going to be like, you'll be one of those people who be like, let me, uh, let me show you my gun. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So later, Floyd is cutting a man's hair, and Floyd tells him about Barney coming into some money and the poker game if he is interested. He says he is interested, and we go to commercial. This episode was produced by Pod Machine. They do a great podcast and a great rate. I was fortunate to get started on this a few years ago, um, and I've just been very, very pleased with it ever since. I mean, they can, you know, they will edit your podcast. They will uh, do artwork for your podcast. They'll do the YouTube videos for the podcast, and they have a very quick turnaround time um, once you upload all your material. So I highly recommend it. I'm pro pod in general. I love bean pods. I like pod hotels. I like pod apples maybe but you know what pods i like best pod machines pod machines me too me too i like them better than podcasts i honestly don't even really like podcasts that much so i'm i'm just thankful that you're here why do you do this podcast (laughs) to see your dimples baby to see my dimples well and uh if you really push hard podcast my pod machine might be able to give you some dimples i don't know so <laughs> go to podmachine.com to learn more and enter loaded goat at checkout for a 10 percent discount and that's spelled just like loaded goat so after the break the break the fbi agent comes in and andy tells them about barney and they agree to keep their eyes out for folks and he's played by robert brubaker who played the prosecutor and andy on trial and then at the hotel, Barney is working with the deck of cards and the man from Floyd comes in and he asks Barney what kind of money he has. And Barney says 250000 Woo-wee! That's um, a lot of money. Mm. And he says he's cautious and he wants to see a couple of bundles. And Barney gets up and takes his gun out of his back waist and rips his, hand, and rips his pants. And the man figures out. He's pointing the gun at him, but the man figures out an easy way to dupe Barney is to tell him he's an FBI agent. Complete Quick with flash the of the badge. You got to check yeah. the badge for longer. Yeah. Complete with the secret handshake. This just is kind of, funny. I like you're this. Like this Barney. is so ridiculous. You're like, it's Barney, what a, you know, what a doofus, Barney. I mean, and you are kind of like, okay, yeah, I'll get the bundles and I'll be right back. And then he just comes and brings Andy and the FBI with him and, and they've got the guy. Yeah. I mean, that's what's so funny. Mm-hmm. So Robert tells Barney that the sting operation can only happen with the two of them. He can't let Andy know. And Barney tells him the money is in the courthouse safe, calls Andy and tells him he's working with the FBI, but he can't let him in on it. And Barney hangs up and goes to get the money. The classic seconds. McAllister case. The classic McAllister case. I mean, if, if, if Which you know, I assume is Kevin McAllister, right? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's uh, that is another issue of instance of, Somebody taking the law in their own hands. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay. Barney ba- basically being replaced with one of the wet bandits in Home Alone. I say a lot of bad. I'd say he gets beat up, gets banged up too. I think he does better though than Pesci. You think so? Yeah. But he's, he's well wiry. He's got, he can, he yeah, can bounce totally. and move around. Yeah. Totally. So a few seconds later, they're back. Uh, they're, the FBI man tells Andy he's not he's um, he's not working with Barney, and Barney goes to his his room. Um, I guess his one his, his individual room with his you know that he's got and he, that he rents, and he tells Barney to look out the window, and then the robber spikes his milk. And Which also the robber never puts the milk away. Do you see this? It stays all through the epilogue. Yeah. It stays on top of the fridge. Rude then, house guest. Yeah, he's not somebody I would trust. Barney drinks it, and before long, and I mean, not even before long, he's almost immediately starting to get sleepy. One note would have been a kind of a nice little vibe here if they walk into Barney's place and then look around, and it's papered with the photo of him when he ran for sheriff everywhere. And I was like, oh boy, that would be great. But it's already clear he's he's you he already know he's a cop, so he yeah. already met, he's already drew his gun. And we cut to the jail where they realize, and I say they, Andy and the FBI agent realize Barney took the money. 
And back at the hotel, Barney passes out and the robber starts to leave with the money. He is met by Andy and the FBI agent who arrest him. Um, Andy then puts Barney to bed and says, can, sleep it off, Tiger. Can I correct you? I don't think that's at the hotel. I think this is Barney's apartment. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I meant to say. Um, yeah, okay. back at, yeah, back at his apartment. Yeah. Cool. Um, and Andy puts Barney to bed and says, sleep it off, Tiger. And we go to commercial. Oh, it's cute. He tucks him under a blanket. He's probably so annoyed with him at this point. Um, in the epilogue, Andy is chewing Barney out and tells him to take his gun out, the gun out of his pants. He rips his pants and the gun goes off. And Andy makes him hand over the gun and then says, you want to give me your pants? I'll take them to the artists and weavers as we close. It's a nice episode. I think this nice was episode. fun. It's a manhunt in a new context. It is. I mean, it starts off with, I mean, I, I, I'm always for any anything that starts with somebody finding a satchel full of money. I feel like that is a great, a great plot I advice. I agree. And how many whistles would you give this? After drinking a glass of water, I would give this one eight whistles. I agree with you. I was thinking eight myself. Eight for eight. Eight Enjoy for eight. it all around. Any final thoughts? If you're looking for a trip down memory lane and want to watch an episode sure to tickle your buttons, we recommend Finding a Quarter of a Million Dollars by The Andy Griffith Show. Actually, it's if I had a quarter million. Oh, so close. Yeah. No other thoughts. Me neither. Thanks for listening, folks. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. If you think about it, subscribe. Next week, we'll do TV or not TV. Until then, Christopher, sleep it off, Tiger. Ta-ta! Ta-ta!